So it is 10.02, so let's uh, pray for church planters. Um, Heavenly Father, uh, we lift up Father Jerry to you in uh, Moscow, Idaho, and his congregation there. We thank you that they have been uh, welcomed into the diocese. We thank you that they are excited about reaching uh, the university there. We pray that your spirit would be upon them as they do reach out to the students, particularly during this time, Lord, of uncertainty. Um, we ask that as the students return uh, in the fall, uh, that the, the parish would be welcomed to them, would be open, and that they would find ways to minister to them. And all things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our processional hymn this morning is All Creatures of Our God and King. Please stand. <laughs> commandments depend all the law and the prophets. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. That one's my song, so. It's a hot spot right now. Um, the Gloria, we're going to sing the Gloria Patri. Are not hidden from you. 
Let not those who trust in you, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Let not those who seek you be confounded through me, O God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach. Shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brethren. And unknown to my mother's children. Because zeal for your house has consumed me. And the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen upon me. I wept and humbled myself with fasting. But that was turned to my reproach. I put on a sackcloth also. And I became a byword among them. So those who sit in the gate speak against me. And the drunkards make songs about me. But O Lord, my name return to you in a acceptable time. Hear me, O God, in the multitude of your mercy. Even in the truth of your salvation. Take me out of the mire, lest I sink. O let me be delivered from those who hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the flood waters drown me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Or let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me according to the multitude of your mercies. And hide not your face from your servant, for I am in trouble. O hasten and hear me. Romans 5, 15b through 19. For if many died through one man's trespasses, much more have the grace of God and the free gifts by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought, brought justification. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to the condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the men, many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many were made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Please stand for the gospel. We will sing the first two verses of Speak, O Lord, uh, and then hear the gospel, and then the last verse.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in the synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. And when they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. What you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put in death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> So I think I've told you this before that um, you know priests have nightmares too, and uh, we don't we don't necessarily have nightmares about like when you go to school and you realize that you're naked or you haven't studied for the test or things like that. We have nightmares that you get your sermon ready and it's not what the scriptures were for that day. Guess what? <laughs> So somehow I got off track, and um, I, I'm assuming that I prepared a sermon for next week, um, but which leaves me with two choices. One, I can wing it, and I don't think either one of us wants that. Uh, or two, I can go ahead with, with what I prepared, and, and so I'm going to do that. Um, and basically, we're going to be talking about what comes next in the readings for both Romans and for Matthew. Uh, and I'll kind of guide you through it as, as we kind of go along here. Um, the, the reading, starting with, with Matthew, um, you know, Jesus, as, as you just heard, I mean, basically what he did 
Last Sunday was he commissioned the 12 apostles and he sent them out. He kind of told them what they were supposed to do. Uh, and then today we heard that persecution is coming. Uh, but despite that, don't worry about it. Don't fear. Um, and then he goes on, and this is what you're going to hear, I, I assume, next week, but you're going to hear it today. Um, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves uh, father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The, the thought that comes to my mind when I, when I always hear, take up, my, take up your cross and follow me, is the term dead man walking. And, and you may have, have seen that movie. Um, that movie was actually based on, on real events. It was written by a nun. Uh, who was um, went to uh, prison in Louisiana um, and uh, spent time with two murderers on death row who were condemned to death. And she wrote um, this, this story, Dead Man Walking. Um, and, you know, basically the idea is that, that when you are taken from your cell and you are led to the, to the electric chair, or, or in this case the, the injection chamber, you are a dead man walking. In the eyes of the law, you are already dead. You have nothing to gain. You have nothing to lose. You're a dead man walking. And so as, as we look at that, you know, what, what does that mean, right? And, and Jesus explains that a little bit. So first of all, he says, I'm not bringing peace. I'm bringing a sword. And, and the sword that he's talking about there is not necessarily one of war or, or fighting as much as it is just one division. A sword cuts, right? It cuts through things. And so there's division. And he goes on and he, and he quotes Micah. And he says, you know, families are going to be against one another. Now, this is a great Father's Day message, right? A man against his father. Um, but the, the idea is that, again, there's going to be this division. And whenever there's division, you have to make a decision. You have to decide which side you're going to go with. And Jesus says, you know, you can go with the side of your family. You can, you can make a decision. It's me, or my, it's me or your family. What's your decision? That's a hard decision. I mean, it really is. And, and, and what he's getting at, he's not saying you have, to, you have to be enemies with your father or your daughter or your sister. What he's saying is that if, if it comes down to it, and you have to make a decision, you have to make a choice, make the choice for Jesus. And, and that's, those are hard words to hear, and, and then he goes right on, he says, whoever does not take up his cross, whoever does not become a dead man walking, if you're a dead man walking, then nothing else in this world is really going to matter to you, because you're dead. Your life doesn't matter, your possessions don't matter, your family doesn't matter, nothing matters. And, and that's what he's saying is, is if you're taking up your cross, this idea, you know, that when Jesus took up his cross, two things happened. One was, di one, one, one was obedience, and the other was self-denial. Those are decisions that you have to make. You can decide to obey, one of Holy Spirit's favorite words, <laughs> or you can decide to disobey. You can decide to give up yourself. Or you can decide to be selfish and hold on to, to what you have. And Jesus takes it even farther. He says, whoever does not take his cross, he says, um, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And again, you know, what comes to my mind is this idea of people, you know, you probably heard someone say, you know, I, I need to take some time to find myself, right? And, and that usually involves um, a lot of things that aren't very good for your health. <laughs> uh, and, and there's, again, this idea that, well, I'm going to find out myself with my meaning and what I want, 
And, and as I find myself, what happens? You become centered on yourself. As opposed to giving up your life, becoming selfless, which are, are totally the opposite. And, and, and i got to tell you, brothers and sisters, I'm really getting discouraged about the numbers of COVID. Um, but I think that's a prime example. You know, we have a, cho you have a choice. You can wear a mask, you can not wear a mask. You can go out into public and be responsible or not. I, I, I don't like going to Walmart anymore because nobody wears a mask. You have a choice. You can, you can do it your way, focusing on the fact that I hate wearing a mask because I hyperventilate through it and, and it doesn't show my beard and, and whatever. Or you can say, you know what, for the sake of others, I'm going to wear a mask. When we look at the, the things that are going on these days with, with racism, with, with um, the demonstrations and the riots and and, and, you know, people are hating blacks, people are hating cops, people are hating, pick something. You can decide to do that focused in on yourself, or you can decide to be selfless and start thinking about other people. Um, we had this great uh, meeting in the, in the, with the rectors in the diocese, uh, and the, I believe the one and only um, black priest that we have spoke to us. Um, this is a guy who's a priest, he was a sheriff, uh, and he's a black man. And he talked about being, as a sheriff, when he was working as a sheriff, being pulled over, prone down on the ground, and having a gun put to his head. And I thought to myself, you know, if I got pulled over, I would never in a million years worry about that. And, and just this idea of, of Thinking outside of yourself, going beyond what it means to me to wear a mask, going beyond what it means to me in, in, a, in, a, in a day of, of outrage. But what does it mean for others? So, so picking up your cross, denying yourself, losing yourself, and that's what leads to finding life. So, so we have this concept of, of dead man walking, okay? And then I want to go to Romans. And so Romans... Um, we just kind of heard uh, Paul expanding again on the argument about Adam, the one man, bringing sin into the world. The consequence of that is condemnation and death. And another man, Jesus Christ, bringing salvation into the world and life, right? And so Paul goes on. <laughs> and, and in chapter 6, we're going to talk about that. So he says, what shall we say then? And, and he's continuing the argument because he just said, in verse 20, he said, Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So Paul's anticipating people are going to raise questions about that. Right? Well, well, if sin is increasing, and that makes grace increase more, then maybe I should sin more, because then I get more grace. Right? It's a, it's a chance for God to show his glory. And, and we kind of laugh at that, but, but in some ways... We kind of do that, too. You know, it's the idea, well, I'm saved, so, you know, it'll all balance out in the end. It'll all work out. But Paul says, by no means. Um, it, we don't continue in the sin. He says, what shall we say then? Are we, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? And the idea of continuing in sin there isn't just, I'm going to keep sinning. It's the idea of, of being in sin, of being, like, submerged in it, living a life of sin. The idea that sin is lording it over us, that we are uh, enslaved, submitted, whatever word you want to use. It's not just that we're doing the actions, it's that we, we're, we're immersed in it. We're marinating in it. And says, so are you going to continue in that? By no means. And then he goes on and says, how can we who have died to sin still live in it? There's that dead man walking thing again. And here's Paul's point through this, is that if you're dead... Sin has no rule over you anymore. I, I mean, that makes sense, right? You know, the guy goes to the electric chair and, and, he, and he gets executed. He, he's not going to sin anymore. He's not living in sin because he's dead. And, and Paul is using that same analogy here. He says, if we died in sin, how can we still live in it? We can't. 
says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now, this is going to sound like a tangent. Um, it's not. <laughs> being Anglican, part of being an Anglican means that we have a high view of the sacraments. That, that to us, a sacrament is more than just a... Uh, Memorial. It's more than just something that you do. It actually has meaning and it has power. And this is one of those sections in the, in the scriptures where, where we can draw from as Anglicans and say, you know, okay, so what does this really mean if we've been baptized into Christ, we were baptized into his death? And, and again, there is a lot of symbolism in baptism, right? So you're submerged beneath the water. You die. And if you're a good priest when you're submerging someone, you actually kind of hold them there for a little bit. <laughs> Seriously. A until it gets uncomfortable. And then you raise them up because you died and now you came to life. And, and so, the, so yes, the symbolism is there, but it's more than that because we're not just being baptized. It's not just a symbol of dying. It's actually that we're being baptized into Christ. That we are becoming identified with Christ. That we are becoming into relationship with Christ. He says, we, therefore bear, uh, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So a lot of things in that sentence, because it's one of Paul's long <clears throat> sentences. But um, let, let me just read part of that again. And, and I'm going to change the word order a little bit. Therefore, we, well, let me, let me think about this. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism. And I think it's interesting that in Romans, which is full of faith, Paul doesn't use the word faith there. You know, I mean, that can make sense, right? We were, we were buried, therefore, with him by faith into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we might too walk in the newness of life. But Paul doesn't say that. So, so for Paul, baptism means something. I mean, yes, Paul spends a lot of time in Romans talking about faith and justification by faith. But now all of a sudden there's something else that comes in, which is baptism, which brings us into this different relationship with Jesus and, and into a relationship with death and with life that has meaning. And, and I'll, I'll pretty much leave it there. We'll come back in just a minute to baptism. But I mean, there's, there's, that's probably more of a class than it is a sermon. But um, just the importance of baptism in terms of our relationship with Christ, with the church, and with others. Uh, and, and then again, the end of this, that, that the, the hope is, is that just as Christ was, was raised from the dead, we too might walk in newness of life. Now, we've been talking about dead man walking, right? Now, all of a sudden, we're talking about new man walking. New life. Walking in new life. That comes through that faith and through that baptism. And, and in, in that situation, Paul goes on, he says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, and, and the word for united is like knit together or fused. This idea that, that, I mean, it's all throughout the Bible, right? That, that God, that Christ is in us and we are in Christ. This idea of, of being in Christ, that this idea of being united with him. So if we've been united with him in death, then certainly we will be united with him in a, in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him. So in the readings today, we talked about Adam, we talked about the one man who brought sin into the world in condemnation. That's the old self. Um, sometimes you hear it referred to as the old man, you know. Um, and so here's again is this idea that we were living under condemnation. Our old life, our old self, was under the, the rule of sin. Sin had power and dominion over us until we were crucified with Jesus in order that that body of sin might be brought to nothing, might become powerless. So again, here's this picture of, of sin basically being our Lord and, and, and lording it over us, having power and dominion over us, that we're slaves to sin. But instead, through Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection, 
we are brought out of that situation, that we are no longer subject to the power or the dominion or the lordship of sin. Paul goes on, he says, death no longer has dominion over Christ. Christ, uh, being raised from the dead, will never die again. For the faith he died, for the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So again, this idea of we used to live to sin, now we're living to God. That's the newness of life. That's, that's the new man walking, is that we are living to God. And he says, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. So, so yes, you are a dead man walking when it comes to sin, when it comes to self, when it comes to the world. But you're also a new man walking when it comes to Jesus Christ and the resurrection and who we can serve. What's striking to me is, is it, it, it's easy to say that stuff, but what would that really look like? What would, what would it look like if we really lived like dead men or women walking? If, if, we, if we didn't worry about all this other stuff, Many years ago, there was one of the Synod Kingdom Conference things, and there was a, a group of missionaries, a man and a woman missionary, who were in the Middle East. They couldn't reveal where they were exactly because of safety issues. But the gentleman said that, and, and it struck me. He said, we, we view ourselves as dead men walking. You know, because, yes, we could, we could literally die tomorrow um, at the persecution of uh, Muslims or, or terrorists or whatever, but, but we've given it all up. We don't worry about that. That's what Jesus said in our, in our lessons today, right? Fear not. The way that you fear not is by being a dead man walking. Mm -hmm. But also, what would it look like if we were living that new life? If we were truly dead to sin but living to Christ? It's, that doesn't mean that we're not going to sin. But it, but it does mean that sin doesn't have the power over us that it used to. That we are not slaves to that. I, I, it makes a huge difference. And, and I would say, and this is where I'll bring baptism in one more time. Baptism is that connection between dead man walking and new person walking. So, with that in mind, I do have to put in a Father's Day message here. Um, so we've talked about dead man walking. We've talked about live man walking. We haven't talked about the walking dead. Right, and, and so zombie movies, right? It's Father's Day, you need to go watch a zombie movie with your father. Um, I would recommend either uh, a movie called Ah Zombies, which is a great movie, um, or The Boy Scout Guide to Zombies, which I think you still have. Did I give that one to you? Okay, I've lost it then, but those two are really good, okay? Um, but in seriousness, The Walking Dead are all the people that are out there. Those are people that are dead. A dead man walking is a live person who's acting like he's dead. Walking dead are dead people that are acting like they're alive. And that's all those people that are out there. And if we are truly going to be dead men walking and new people walking, then we should care about all those people out there that are the walking dead. Because we've got the answer to life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you um, for the cross. Thank you for Jesus' resurrection and the life that we have through him. Thank you that we can uh, become free from sin uh, and place our, uh, ourselves under dominion of Jesus Christ instead of sin. Thank you that, that we do that through your grace and not through our own power. Thank you, Lord, uh, that you provide a means for us to do that. And thank you that, that you allow us to participate in that kingdom building as well. Bless us and bless our fathers. Give us uh, joy this day. Give us peace this day. And give us a heart for those who do not know you this day. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I have no idea what I'm going to preach about next week. <laughs> Maybe I'll preach about this one. Yeah. <laughs> Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
And so guide and direct their leaders, especially Donald, our president, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your prayer. Hear our prayer. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servant, our Foley, our bishop, Keith, our bishop, John, our priest, Gretchen, our deacon, that by their life and teachings, they may proclaim your true and life-giving word, and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all people, give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, and with the reverent and obedient hearts, we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, for all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we ask you to give us grace to follow the good example of all your saints, that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces and the first responders at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace, strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils that beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence, wherever they may be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. I pray for the young pilot who was killed this last week in the North Atlantic and his wife, his family. I ask that you would be with them and comfort them during this time. 
to all the first responders who are still involved with COVID. Nurses, doctors, <coughs> have mercy on them. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may abide in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Please greet your family members and wave across the aisle to everybody else. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> so um, instead of a post meeting, we'll just do an offertory hymn. Does that work? So, um, whatever the next song is. Come with joy. Come with joy. So, um, again, we're not passing the plate. Um, the plate is in the back if you want to put something in that. Or, again, we just encourage you to do online giving. Um, but while we're preparing the table and everything, we'll offer up a, a song of praise and thanksgiving. <laughs> Yeah. 
are in the Book of Common Prayer on page 137. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. And of you, O Lord, have you to you. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks to your grace. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. And this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of truth. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and be in him. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, together, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'm looking forward to the day where we can all join hands and, and say the Lord's Prayer, but you can at least join hands with family. So I encourage you to do that. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Together. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. These are the gifts of God for you. The people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Please be seated. And we will call you up. <laughs>